Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's chemistry lesson. Today we're going to be looking at amount of substance, the mole and stoichiometry. So today's lesson we're going to be able to recall the Avogadro's constant and finally we're going to be looking to apply stoichiometry rules to calculate unknown moles. So first up let's look at Avogadro and the mole. We deal with moles when we're talking about things like atoms, elements or molecules because at the end of the day these things are really very tiny and it's very difficult to actually weigh individual atoms, elements and molecules. Normally we're dealing with things in grams of substances. So we need a, a constant of proportionality which allows us to calculate how many of these things we've got in a, in a gram or 12 grams of a substance. So the mole is simply the unit with which we describe or measure amount of substance. It has a unit, mole for short, and has a value of around about 6.023 times 10 to the 23 is its value. So let's look at a very simple example. If we had carbon plus oxygen going to make carbon dioxide this tells me that I have one mole of carbon atoms will react with one mole of oxygen molecules to make one mole of carbon dioxide molecules. In other words, if I had 6.023 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon, they would react with 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules of oxygen and make or produce one 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules of carbon dioxide. Another example might be if we were to look at the burning of magnesium plus oxygen, going to make magnesium oxide. The first thing you might say is we need to balance that equation. Two magnesiums and two magnesium oxides. And if you're not sure on that balancing, and do make sure you go and have a look on balancing equations. But this tells me if I had two moles of magnesium atoms, they would react with one mole of oxygen molecules and go to make two moles of magnesium oxide molecules. And if we were to describe that in terms of actual numbers, then it would be two lots of 6.023 times 10 to the 23 atoms of magnesium one lot of 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules of oxygen go to make 2 times 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules of magnesium oxygen. So finally, if we were given a mass of a substance and we wanted to find out how many atoms we had, we could use the molecular mass of that substance to find out um, how many of those things that we had. So if we said we had, uh, let's say we had 0.5 moles of magnesium, well then we would know by multiplying that by Avogadro's constant, we don't have to remember for the exam, then we would end up with 3.012 atoms of magnesium. Oops. Times 10 to the 23, of course, atoms of magnesium. And that's about it. We're now going to go on and look at how we can use balanced equations to work out unknown values 
of moles so that we can work them out and calculate. So let's just go and have a look now and see what we mean by balance equations, stoichiometry, and how we can calculate unknown moles. Here we've got a reaction where we've got copper oxide and hydrogen going to make copper, metal, and H2O water. What's the equation telling us? Well, first of all, there are no numbers in front, which means that we can assume that these are 1. And we can also see that the equation is balanced. We have one copper oxide, would react with one hydrogen molecule, make one copper atom and one molecule of water. So this would be true as well if I had one mole of each of these substances of copper oxide, I would also make one mole of water. I'd also be able to find out the copper and the hydrogen. This is also true if I had 0.25 moles of copper oxide, I'd go and make 0.25 mole of H2O. And the same is true, I'd use 0.25 mole of hydrogen molecules and make 0.25 mole of copper atom. So hopefully they're a very simple example before we go and move on to something a little bit more complicated. So this time we'll look at something a little bit more complicated. You might not have come across this yet in your chemistry, but this molecule on the left is butane, with four carbons, and it's combustion with oxygen to make four carbon dioxide and five water. There's no number in front of the butane, so we can assume that that means there should be a, let's write a one in front of this equation. Now let's suppose we had one mole of butane to start off with. How many moles of oxygen, how many moles of CO2 and how many moles of water? I'll give you a second to think about that and then we'll talk about actually the process that your brain has gone through to work that out. That's right, you've got six and a half of oxygen, four of CO2 and five of water. Now what's your brain figured out in your head, well actually it's worked out the moles you want to know and it's ratioed those to the ones that you do know. So six and a half over one multiplied by the number of moles that you know, which is one here, gives you six and a half. For the CO2 example, you want to know about the CO2, so that's four over one for the moles of butane because that's what we know about multiply them by the moles of butane, which is 1 gives us 4, and the same is true here for the water. 5 over 1 times by 1 gives us 5. Okay, so a pretty simple, easy start. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's imagine we only know about the moles of carbon dioxide, and let's say that we're starting here with 0.25 moles of carbon dioxide. The question is, how many moles of water do I also have? And how many moles of oxygen and butane is that made from? I'll give you a second just to think about it. How would we do the, re the question? Okay, so let's have a look. Hopefully, you will have looked at the equation and started looking at the ratios and how we put those together. So, we look at the moles of water, which is 5 to 4 ratio. So, to work out that ratio, we do 5 over 4 multiplied by the moles that we know about, which is 0.25. You put that into your calculator, you should end up with 0.25. 3, 1, 2, 5. Well done if you got that right. And of course, here we've got units of mole put into 2. Let's go the other way. Well, how much butane would that be made from? Well, the ratio here, 4 to 1 again. 
So we want to know about the moles of butane. We have the moles of carbon dioxide. So that's coming from the equation, 1 to 4. We're going to multiply it by the moles that we know, which is times 0.25. And hopefully then you've got 0.25 multiplied by well, 0.25 again. And you should end up with, I'll put it underneath here, 0.0625 moles. And of course here the final one, another complicated looking one, we've got the oxygen. How much oxygen would that have been made from? Well, we've got on the top six and a half, because that's the moles we're interested in, divided by the moles that we know about, which is four, multiplied by 0.25, giving us a ratio of six and a half to four, multiplied by 0.25, giving us a moles here that would have reacted together of 0.40625 moles. And we can just double check if we really wanted to. The ratio between the oxygen to the butane should be 6 to 1. So you can check, see if your calculation is correct, that 0.40625 divided by 6 should give you 0 0.0625. And you put that into your calculator, indeed it does. So being able to manipulate a calculation, find out the moles of one of your species, and from there work out the moles of all other parts of that reaction, is going to be absolutely imperative that you're able to do for the rest of the amount of subject questions. And we call that the ratios of the molecules in an equation, the stoichiometry. So again, just to recap what we've seen in amount of substance, the molar and stoichiometry, we've been looking at the Avogadro's constant, 6.023 times 10 to the 23, seeing what it means, and then importantly, We've been applying the stoichiometry rules to calculate unknown moles in equations, and that's going to be really important when we work out molar ratios later on. Okay, catch you next time.